So, good morning, everybody. I'm happy to see that so many people are interested in security in the early morning. So, let's start. You probably know me, Christian Bolz. I'm the Abamoa maintainer in OpenSUSE and also upstream for the user space tools. And so, let's just start. What does Abamoa do? Well, basically, the answer is simple because it allows applications to do only what they are supposed to do and deny everything else. But in fact, it isn't that easy because first we must tell AppAmor what the application should be allowed to do. So why AppAmor? Well, ideally we would have bug-free and secure software, but well, you all know programmers can perform magic and that's why we have to keep an eye on what they are doing. And AppAmor monitors the applications at the kernel level. So, hands up, who is using Abamor? Okay, so, who is using it without knowing it because it's enabled by default? <laughs> I guess nearly everybody. So, who already created or updated a profile with the AA tools? Okay, who edited a profile with VI or another editor? Okay, I'm surprised that you seem to prefer the editor, but why not? And the cross-check who never used Abamor? Okay, so also some. So let's start with the usual Hello World script. Have a look what it does. It just writes Hello World to a file, gets this file and deletes it again. So let's create a profile for it. So when you create a profile, there's the tool named AA Genprof, and you just tell it the program you want to profile, start it, and then switch to another X term or whatever and actually run the program. So in that case, just hello, you see it works. You also see that the log gets filled, so let's create a profile. So I type S for scan the log. And why does the window have to move a bit? Yes. So there are different ways how to execute an application. I'll choose inherit. I'll explain later what it does. And the same for RM. So then our script needs to write to the console, and in that case we can use an abstraction that's an include file with a set of rules that are typical for that. So a like a low. Of course it needs to write its temp file and to read it. And basically that's it. So let's view the profile. So you see the console abstraction, it needs bash to run, it needs to read the script itself, of course, read and write a temp file, and execute cat and rm. So let's save that profile and finish that stuff. So I'm afraid I have bad news because that script is insecure. So can someone point out why it is insecure? Any ideas? Nobody? Okay, seems you didn't have enough coffee, so let me explain it. It's quite simple. It uses a fixed file name in temp, and that means you can do a symlink attack. So, back to the shell. Let's check the profile again. Ah, okay. Good hint, thank you. So that's our, our profile. We already have seen it when creating it, so just stop. And now let's say we are an evil hacker who runs something like that. To make it more funny, let's even, even do it as root.
So we now have a symlink, and if we now run the Hello World script again, it will just say permission denied. And you can also see it in the log. So the symlink pointed to the root authorized keys, but the profile denied access to it. So that's the first case where Abamor prevented an exploit. So back to the presentation. And let's see, what, what does Abamor do in detail? So it monitors and restricts file access. We have already seen that. Also network access, capabilities like change own, make note, set UID, whatever. Man7 capabilities has a full list. You can set a limits, also known as U limit, and in general, Abamor restricts permissions. What does Abamor not do? It does not replace the traditional file permissions, so please do not change mod 777 everything. It does not replace the user permissions, so you shouldn't run everything as root. Then if you run a web server, you want to have a MySQL user for each hosting and task. You probably also want to test the MySQL firewall we heard yesterday. You should, of course, validate the user input. You should escape special jars. And the PHP 5 Suho Scene extension is also a nice thing. So, is the server secure now? Hmm. If I would say yes, it would be too easy because security consists of a lot of things. And Abamoa protects you from a lot, but not everything. And I think we can say with Abamoa, the server is more secure than without. So what are the Abamoa tools? We have AA status, which shows you an overview of the loaded profiles and how they are used. We have AA unconfined, which shows you which running processes are protected and what, which not. You can get desktop notifications and log summaries with AA Notify. Then we have AA Complain. This switches the profile into learning mode, so it allows everything but writes to the log the things that are not in the profile yet. We have AA Enforce, which does exactly the opposite and switch the profile into enforced mode, so if something is not in the profile, it will be blocked. We have AA Disable, which you hopefully don't need too often because it just disables the profile. And we have AA Audit, which switches the whole profile in the audit mode, which means it locks everything, even if it's allowed in the profile. Then we have AA LogProf, that's a tool to update the existing profiles based on the audit log. I already showed AA GenProf, that's for creating a new profile. A very small version to create the basic profile is AA Autodep, which you typically don't run manually because it's done by AA GenProf already. Then there is AA EasyProf, that's a template-based system which is not really used in OpenSUSE, but Ubuntu uses it quite a bit. One of the newer tools is AA Merger Proof. That is, if you have three servers and over the time the profiles were updated, you know, on one server you added this, on the other you added that, an AA Merger Proof can be used to integrate everything again. AA Clean Proof is just a clean up, so it removes rules that are covered by other rules, sorts the profile, whatever, so it looks clear again. Then we have a little helper named AA Decode because if your file has a special name, which can be, for example, with a space in it, the audit log will contain a somewhat encoded string which is not user-readable and AA Decode will make it readable again. And we have AA Exec which can be used to execute something with a profile that is not a default profile for it. So let's have a look at AA Unconfined. That's an example output. So we see VS FTPD is not confined. And there's a general rule of thumb. Everything that is accessible from the internet should be 
protected and because we as if the BD is not we should just fix that and yeah, yeah as I already showed with the hello world script the best method to do is 2x terms in the first you run a HN prof in the second you actually use the application and the usual tactics is first just do a start and stop and then update the profile the first time. That means you don't get a too big log. Get the basics in the profile. Then in the second step you use the application, scan the log again, update the profile and so on. And when you have done that, you probably might run, want to run the profile in the learning mode for some time because Usually you don't get everything in five minutes. So let's just create that profile. So ahnprof vsftpd. So let's just restart it. You see there are already some things in the log. So, scan the log. Let's see, what does it want to do? It needs the NetBind service capability, not surprising. Then it needs name service. That includes the network access, but also things like reading resolve conf, asking your name server, whatever. It reads its config file. Then that's sneaked in from something else, but why not? I'll just ignore it for now. Uh, okay, the edge client is doing funny stuff with me, but let's focus on the FTPD profile. And that's the basic one for at least being able to start and stop it. So save the changes again. Now we should probably use it, so let's say log in. So we are logged in, log out again, and now back to scanning the log. So we see FTP logins mean change route, so we should allow that. It sets the user ID to the login name, so that's also okay. It writes to the audit log when someone logged in. And it needs to read a environment file, FTP users. It needs to do authentication. So let's just include the authentication abstraction. So that includes everything. It checks the ETC shells. The H client again, ignore it for now. Ignore, so what do we have? You see, we added the abstraction for identification, some capabilities, and so on. So, save that one, and I'll finish for now, but the profile is not really finished because we still did not upload any file, so that's missing from the profile. So let's put it in the learning mode. Okay, but I think I don't need to show this in detail because it's exactly the same workflow. So let's see file permissions. We already had some of them. Read and write are obvious. There's A for append. L for hard links, K for log, M for mmap, so for libraries you use it, and there are different execute options. So we have the inherit option IX means run the program with the same profile, and that's what you use for helper application and shell, so cat, grep, rm, bash, whatever. And you can also use it for a role-based access control style if you just confine the user shell, which should then be a shell with a non-default name because you don't want to have a profile for a bash. 
Another way are child profiles, CX. That's a thing that gets used for a full, full called by bar, but not if you call foo standalone. And that's useful if the helper program needs more or less permissions than the main application. We have the PX option, which means create a separate profile for the other application. And this profile is also used when the other application is called standalone. And as I already said, do not do this for any shell because it will just make your system unusable except if you allow basically everything and that would make the profile useless. And finally, we have the option, if nothing else is possible, to use unconfined. So if a program gets executed, it runs without more protection. That should be rarely used, but it can be useful, for example, if you protect your SSH daemon and then after the login, you can allow to run the shells unconfined so that the users can actually work. There are also fallback rules like pigs, pooks, and the same for child profiles, which means for pigs, if a profile exists, use it, and otherwise fall back to the current profile. And I think the other ones are obvious, so I don't need to explain them in detail. There's also the option to apply a name to a profile and use named execute rules. So you can say you use a short name for the profile, like I show with profile ping and then the path. So it will still apply to ping, but it has a short name, so it's easier to refer. And the rules look like what you see in the bottom right, so just the arrow and the profile name as target. So you can call separate help us with the same profile, for example. Then there's another thing with execute rules. You can decide if you want to clean the environment variables like LD preload and so on. In general, you should do that because it's more secure. That are the uppercase rules. And if you really need LD preload and so on preserved, then use lowercase execution rules. So there are also other rule types, like network, we already have that, and the newest kernel code also supports dbus, mount, signal, ptrace, private root, and unique sockets, but that stuff that is currently only in the Ubuntu kernel, so we promised to upstream it, but didn't have time to do it yet. So just a small look at the audit log format again. You probably noticed that there are lots of tickets in it. So you have this one. That's actually the timestamp. And if you want that in a human readable way, you can just use date minus D add and then the number. And that will convert it to something a human can, can understand. And you should also check your audit log regularly. So add it to the log digest or let Cron mail you the summary created by AA Notify, whatever you prefer. The event types can be denied that are blocked violations of profiles in enforce mode. You can have audit events which happen if you switched a profile to the audit mode or if a rule has the audit keyword in it. And there's the allowed event for profiles in complaint mode. So now to the more interesting stuff. There's an Apache module, mod up more. So typically you add in your global Apache config somewhere the AA default head name, default for her for example, because otherwise it could happen that Abamor proposes one head per file and that's a bit too much. Then you can and should set it for each virtual host with a default head name again. And that is what you usually do to restrict each virtual host to itself. And if you have several 
boah, alles separate things on a virtual host, like let's say a wiki, a forum and whatever on the same domain. So you can also set the head to use for each directory or even for a single file if you really want. So I mentioned the word heads a few times. What's that? Heads are similar to subprofiles. The difference is that an application can switch between them easily. There's the change head call in the lib more, but you can also just write to a file in Brook if you really want. And the typical use case is a patch with several heads, one per virtual host at least. And that's the syntax. So how do the, does it look in practice? For example, for my own home, home page, the, as the base configuration first, include the common abstraction stuff like error pages and whatever. Then allow to read the password for accessing my web statistics. Of course, allow reading everything in the document route. Allow write access to the logs. You see, I also allow write access to logs that are just rotated away, but Apache is not restarted yet. Then read the access statistics, write access to the temp file for like PHP sessions. Yeah. And you want to create that snippets with a script because you need it for each virtual host and doing, doing it manually and no thanks. There's a special host, a special head named handling untrusted input that is used when Apache is just idling around. And the interesting thing is it sometimes does a bit more than you would think. So it happens that it does the log writes for each virtual host because for some reason Apache leaves the virtual host head too early. So. How tight should a profile be? I have a real world example of a forum. You know, it allows to upload avatar pictures. That's nice, but it's not so nice if you can upload something like myphoto.php. And so the question is, does your profile have allow uploading any file in the avatar directory or allow just JPEG, PNG and GIF? And you can also use a rule like deny owner slash everything.php read and write. That means to deny reading and writing files that are owned by the user, so the Apache user effectively. That prevents exploits, but the problem is that the modern content management systems have functions to update themselves and basically will need to read and write files that are owned by the Apache user. So I also did some creative usage of Abamoa like an inventory list. So which virtual host uses the scripts I have in a server wide chat directory? Which virtual host calls sendmail? You can also use it as a debugging tool if you want to find out which files an application read and writes. It's probably easier to use than strays in some cases. An important detail is the PSZ aux. So the uppercase Z will include the current profile the process is using. So you can, for example, see for the Apache processes in which virtual host it is currently. That's good if you wonder, hmm, what is this process doing with an eating CPU or something like that? And another funny example is read-only root access for doing backups. And that looks like that. Basically, it consists of two parts. First, I have the SSA key in the authorized keys with the restriction command root bin async shell. So the key can only be used to execute this one command. And that's actually a little script, which first writes the command to the syslog, then checks if it's really a async call. That's just 
an additional safety net and finally executes it. And the second part is the profile. So the short version is it allows to execute async with inherit, so with the same profile. It also allows to execute lookup, bash, and grep. That's needed by the script. And it allows reading stuff in etc, home, and yes, you probably want to add some other directories there. But I think you get the point, so it can't write anything. So maybe some of you heard I was at DebConf also, so is there any relation between Debian and OpenSUSE? Well, I'd say it depends how you turn it. But to be more serious, I helped the Debian people a bit to get started with Abamoa, and if everything works out, well, now be in Cape Town and work on a profile repo for cross-distribution profile sharing. So everyone benefits, and we shouldn't forget Ubuntu because some other Abamoa developers are working for Canonical. So there's a final profile I will show. I don't recommend to use that style because, well, as you can see, it's not too readable. So what does this do? First, there's the file rule. That means allow all file access. Yeah, that's the real bug of this profile because you should not do that because then you need to that to use deny rules to create exceptions. So I think I'll just show what we do. So as I started, the global file rule is the bad idea and then we have to add some exceptions. So have a lot of fun. First, we deny writing to files directly in the proc directory. Then the next rule is the most funny one. We deny writing to everything instead of proc number, so the proc pit, or proc sys. So these two are allowed, and everything else in proc is denied. And then it goes into the detail even more, so effectively it denies everything that is in proc sys, but not proc sys kernel. SHM something. So the bad thing is, this is not something I made up, this is something that is used in the real world and that's the reaction. So it's real a profile where I say, yes, Asperin might be needed to avoid head edge. So if you want more information about Abamoa, there's the abamoa.d main page that describes the profile syntax. There's, of course, the upstream homepage and wiki. We have something in the OpenSUSE wiki. Debian has something, Ubuntu. There's also a nice chapter in the OpenSUSE security guide about Abamoa. And if you need help, come to the IRC channel on the upstream mailing list or maybe even on the Debian Abamoa mailing list. So, and basically that's it. Any questions? Okay, wait for the microphone, please. Um, I'm developing a valence server and I'm wondering whether I could use AppArmor to confine which applications are allowed to access which protocols. Like in KDE, we have a few privileged protocols, which we only want certain applications to be able to access. Would AppArmor be a solution for that? Um, I'd have to check how exactly these protocols are used. So you could method one, if you can do it on a file level, like the protocol needs that to read that file, you could deny it that way. Not. Um, the network restrictions are not too detailed. I plans to change this, but nothing did it yet. So maybe you could 
do something on allowing or not allowing to execute another binary. That would be an option. So in general, I think it should be possible, but I'm happy to discuss it in detail with you. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> so. Other questions? Okay, doesn't look so, so I'm not sure. Did I tell you everything or are you still just lagging coffee? <laughs> so anyway, thank you for listening.